Hi, everyone. On the 15th of May, the Holy Orthodox Church celebrates the memory of our venerable father and wonder worker, Andrew. Now, Andrew lived about the mid 13th century and was a man who was noted for his ascetical efforts. In fact, he started out with a spouse and the life is not very, well, shall we say, detailed in terms of what happened there. But at some point, Andrew, desiring to give up absolutely everything that he had to follow Christ, left and went out into the wilderness. Now, this is one of those lives where, uh, at the time, had a great, great effect on many, many people, and the saint was very, very well known uh, for many, many miles and countries all around. But yet, we don't have a lot of information about him. We do know that when he went out into the desert, it was quite barren, extreme changes of temperature. He was beset by wild beasts and deprivations and lack of food and all sorts of things that almost remind you of the sojourn of Mary of Egypt in the desert. And he stayed there for many, many years before finally returning to his homeland. Now his homeland at the time was post 1204 AD, which means that it was after the fall of Constantinople in 1204. Now, there were regions that were divided up among several rulers in the area. One of the regions was Epirus. Now, Epirus was governed by Michael II Kovdinus and his very devout wife, Theodora, who actually became a saint too and is commemorated in March. She really had nothing to do with any of the trappings of being an empress and lived a very devout and pious life by all accounts. And she also knew of Andrew. For when Andrew came back and came near his parents' house and went up on a high mountain, there he spent the rest of his life and reposed in peace. But at the time of his departure from this life, it is said in several stories that there were lights that came down, looking like lamps flashing lightning from heaven, that were illuminating the place where his relics were, because, of course, he had reposed alone. Theodora heard of this, and many people in the surrounding regions heard of this too. And because of it, she was led to go and find the relics of Andrew and built a large church in that place. Now, after a while, these relics became lost, or at least it was unclear where in the area they were, but other pious people, particularly one uh, priest about 500 years later in the 1700s, sought after them, and Andrew appeared to him in a dream to show him exactly where they were. The relics were then taken and divided and given to many, many churches where even today the life of St. Andrew is celebrated with great splendor and great reverence. Now, of course, we might wonder if we want to hearken back to the beginnings of this story about what happened to the spouse in our mindset today, the idea of one spouse leaving another and going off by him or herself to lead an ascetical life devoted only to Christ is something that we perhaps find a little hard to swallow. But there have been instances, and because we don't find anything in this particular life that illuminates the conversations between Andrew and his spouse, it can be all too easy for us to make judgments about this. But as I said, there have been a number of men and women 
in the hagiography of the Orthodox Church that have done just this, that have agreed even after marriage that they both wanted to seek the will of the Lord in a more ascetical uh, and perhaps dedicated setting than they initially had. We'll never know unless some hidden manuscript comes to light that uh, examines the life of the uh, venerable ascetic Andrew. But I think it's very reasonable for us to say that if he had simply left his spouse, left her high and dry, and just taken off in a very selfish manner, that that would have been a great sin in the eyes of God. But instead, he did this that was pleasing to God, as is shown by his end and by the lights that came down from heaven. And no doubt his spouse was well taken care of in that instance. These things were more common back then than they are today, although there are instances, especially of married couples, uh, separating in their later years when their children are all grown up and becoming monastics. You still see that today. But it's always difficult for us to make judgments according to our current so-called standards about things that may have happened 800, 1500, even 2000 years ago. What we do know is that this life of St. Andrew was well-pleasing to God and that his acclaim resonated throughout the region in which he lived and suffered and prayed and dedicated his life to our Lord Jesus Christ. As we think about him on May 15th, let us ask for his prayers before the throne of God for us and for all families. Bye-bye.